And welcome back. We are being, uh, of course, getting ready to uh, venture off into our first segment and uh, very interesting actually because Biko will be breaking ground for new headquarters in the western part of our country. And here to tell us more about it is none other than uh, Barry Perry, who is the president and CEO of Fortis Inc. And of course, Lin Young, president and CEO of Belize, actually uh, Biko. Biko. Guys, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. We're loving the colors. <laughs> we've got, we've got something big coming up ahead of us uh, when it comes to Biko. Uh, yeah. We're talking here groundbreaking, uh, good things uh, for the country, and then again development for the country. Let's venture off though into Biko. Can you tell us more about Biko and uh, the work that we do. Well, Biko is a subsidiary of our of Fortis, and I'm the CEO of Fortis, and. Uh, uh, provides reliable green energy for uh, for Belize. About 40% of the energy um, for the entire country comes from uh, from Biko, and uh, it's obviously a hydroelectric power. So, so it's green. And uh, Lin Young is our CEO here in uh, in Belize, and we're very excited about uh, this new uh, new building that we're going to build in San San Ignacio, and uh, it's closer to our facilities, and uh, we're looking forward to doing something very nice there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really an exciting time for us at Beacon because, because this, since the last hydro plant that was built, which was VACA, mm -hmm. we haven't done anything, you know. Um, so this new building, we decided it's going to be a green building. It's, I think it's going to be one of the first green buildings in Belize where it's going to be certified as an environmentally and efficient building. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to reflect our position as the company that provides green, reliable power. And in fact, our new motto is, you know, um, powered by nature. So, <laughs> so it's going to be, and the, one of the things we want to do there after we build the building is to then go into some solar. Mm -hmm. So we, we'd like to put in a little solar system there as well. Um, Barry might tell you some more about it, but we've been talking to the government about doing maybe a five or ten megawatt solar system in Belize mm -hmm. to increase the amount of green power that we. Ha Belize is one of the leading countries in the region um, for green electricity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think we might even be. If, if not as, as, Costa Rica might be a little ahead of us. They have a lot of hydropower there too. But we want to keep our position and that's one way we can do that, right? And we well, do have a lot more potential. Oh yeah. yeah. And we want to beat Costa Rica, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just to- I the think the tourism board will agree with you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a better product in, in Belize. Um, the, we have a lot of experience in solar. Yeah. Uh, you might be aware, but uh, Fortis, Fortis owns Tucson Electric Power in Arizona. and. You know, solar in Arizona is, is really uh, a big, uh, big part of the overall generation of electricity, yeah. and uh, you know we're we're hopeful that we can bring that expertise into Belize and uh, expand solar power generation. And uh, you have to get started, basically. You know, you got to walk before you run, and we're hopeful that we can. Uh, work with BEL and with the mm -hmm. government to uh, to start that process mm -hmm. and and add to the sort of green power that BCAL already produces so uh, so we're working on that and hopefully over the next couple three years we can we can make that happen yeah right. now Barry let's take a step back for a bit and and talk about Fortis and its ongoing investment uh, in Belize we know that there was obviously a difficult time when the nationalization took place for BEL. However, you have maintained BCOL in the country and obviously are, you're looking towards expansion. So let's elaborate on that. Yeah, it's a good, quick, good question. You know, we are very connected to Belize. You know, it was part of the evolution of our company. Uh, back in 1999, we bought into BEL mm -hmm. and then we started uh, BCOL shortly after. Um, you know, at, over that period of time, from that 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 time, Fortis has grown dramatically, and yeah. you know, we're like uh, our balance sheet now is almost fifty billion dollars, oh. and uh, we've expanded ag aggressively into the U.S., uh, buying three utilities there, and and we have our businesses in Canada and Turks and Caicos and in Grand Cayman as well. So it's become a very large utility company in North America. At the same time, you know, we we like our Belize business, and we uh, we clearly gone through some difficult uh, situation mm -hmm. with uh, with the matters uh, that we've dealt with here. And in my view, we're past that at yeah. this point in time. And uh, we like our investment in BEL. We own one third of that business at this point. We have some representatives on the board there. Mm -hmm. Lin Young is one of those. And uh, our BCAL operation is doing well. And is well positioned mm -hmm. in in the country. And frankly. 
is really one of the reasons that Belize has some of the lowest electricity rates now in the Caribbean region. The, the benefit of those hydroelectric uh, plants uh, is really flowing to the Belizean uh, customers. And uh, so we're hopeful that we can continue to have a good relationship going forward. Yeah. I'm prepared to, to invest. Uh, clearly, you have to have uh, good business conditions for that. And I'm seeing things improve in Belize. I mm -hmm. don't get here often enough. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I've been back, but uh, I do see changes and I'm hopeful that that will continue and, and our, our investments here will grow over time. We, you know, we, we have tremendous experience, tremendous uh, knowledge about technology in our sector that's happening. There's a lot of changes occurring in the energy mm -hmm. sector. And, we can bring a lot of that to Belize and help. Uh, so, so we're hopeful that we can do that. Yeah, you speak of ongoing conversations with the government, obviously, because uh, you will need the regulatory bodies uh, to to be on board, or um, and you also need to have uh, the buy-in as well. Um, how has that conversation been going in terms of the expansions yeah. that you've been proposing so yeah. far? Well, we're just getting started, really. Anytime you have to to move forward on an endeavor like this you have to start the conversation yeah. and uh, uh, we've been doing that and I will say uh, just overall there's just a good receptivity to the concepts of solar uh, energy you know it's a renewable source it's happening all across North America mm -hmm. uh, and Belize has conditions that, that clearly are, uh, are good for solar so yeah. so there's been a lot of positive support but those are just initial conversations now we have mm -hmm. to hopefully get through uh, some more detailed conversations yeah. and make sure that uh, working with BEL and the government that mm -hmm. um, that we can comply with all the necessary rules and and uh, put the right conditions in place to move forward. I just keep saying, you know, we we have the experience, we know the technology, mm -hmm. we have the capital to, to do this. Um, you have to sort of get some projects started, and, you know, then then you can decide how far you want to go. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we should just get get at it and get it done, basically. That's that's my motto. So, uh, so and, you know, I think we've shown that we've been very reasonable folks to deal with in the country and we'll continue to be that way. Yeah. So this means you'll celebrate when it's sunny and when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe when it's sunny, we'll just not run the water. We'll keep it behind the dam, you know, and, and yeah. use it when, when, yeah. when at night, you know. Uh, yeah. So I'm to become rain or shine. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's always a great weather report. Yeah. But let's, let's talk about the regulations because the Public sure. Utilities Commission is at the point of finalizing the regulations for potential renewable energy sources. Right. Um, and uh, they recently had their consultations in ter uh, to take it to po potential investors to find out whether or not it would fit uh, mm -hmm. the potential investment and still meet what the country needs. Yes. Um, let's talk about your thoughts on the current regulations as they're being proposed. Yeah, so I've looked at them and I think it's a good start. Yeah. Um, we are young in it. And, yeah. But still, there are examples, you know, abroad, for example, in Cayman, mm -hmm. um, they're much more progressed with rooftop solar and, mm -hmm. and, and utility solar, same in Turks and Caicos. So, um, but our situation is a little different. I think we are going to have it easier because of the connection to Mexico. So there's a big um, supply there that, that, you know, if you have a little dip in the supply in Belize, they yeah. can cover it. And also the hydros, again, makes a, makes a big difference because, like Barry said, um, you could almost use the, the storage like a battery. Mm -hmm. So instead of generating from the hydro during the day, you hold back and then at night you, you open up in the, from the hydro. So it's, it's a good fit for us. The regulations. And there's no hydro in Grand Cayman or <laughs> Jackson <laughs> Keiko. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, the Belize has an advantage yeah. there big, for sure. You so. have a big advantage, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I saw in the regulations, I think it, it, it's a really good start. Yeah. Um, there's some details that probably will have to be worked out, and I'm sure. Um, you know, comments will be going into the regulator to, to deal with that, but it's been a good start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think when we think about renewable energy in the country, uh, obviously Bicol is a great example, but looking at being able to be self-sufficient mm -hmm. and uh, exclusively still by renewable energy, which would be the ideal, yeah. um, it means that we do have a bit of catch-up to do. Um, we haven't necessarily... Yeah outfitted or laws to be able to ensure and even our systems uh, how they feed into BEL um, to be able to allow for more investment and for uh, more renewable energy sources mm -hmm. um, given the progression that you've seen over the course of, of Beacle's function within Belize uh, what would you say has been the level of growth uh, it's been tremendous actually and um, 
Well, first of all, I don't think any any of us will be at the point where it's going to be a hundred percent renewable anytime soon, yeah. just because of the cost. One and two, because renewables, um, except for the hydro, you you have issues with in being intermittent. You know, mm -hmm. if it's wind, sometimes the wind isn't blowing, or when it sometimes it blows, it blows too hard. Too right? yeah. <laughs> and same with the sun. So you always you will always have to have some other source to as a backup. As a backup. Yeah. Hydro is a good one, but I think um, down the road. We will probably want, if, if, if it's all possible, to get gas also because gas is much cheaper than diesel and it's less, um, it's more environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. It burns cleaner, right? So I, I think that's that's the direction that the country will eventually have to go. Uh, and there's a limit to how much renewables you can put on the system. Um, what is taking place now, in as, as Barry, Barry might be able to, to tell you a bit more about it, but like in um, Arizona where people are putting on putting solar. solar systems on their homes and feeding mm -hmm. back into the system that is i think what you're referring yeah. to that we need the the, the regulatory system mm. to it's allow that uh, there are some people in believe that are already trying to do that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. but there are no laws no regulations in place um, controlling it and it could be it could be a problem if if people just do things um not to standard, right? Mm -hmm. um, it could be dangerous to people from the EL working mm -hmm. in the lines. I mean, they take off the power, not knowing that somebody is feeding through a solar system back into the power that, that into the lines. That you know, things like that can happen. Yeah. So that's where I think the, the regulations that are being put in place is, is addressed. You know, it's going to address those kind of issues. Yeah. Um, but I just jump yeah, in on a couple sure. of things. Uh, yeah. First of all, I think Belize generally right now probably should be celebrating where its position is on renewables you know the fact that you have 40 percent of your energy coming from hydro you have energy coming from the gas as well which is a renewable resource uh what we're talking about with solar really is just adding to that you know and making it even better but belize is in a really good place with regards to uh, its position on renewable energy compared to many other jurisdictions, especially other jurisdictions in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. In terms of rooftop solar, I, I would just, you know, I'm a very uh, strong supporter of solar. You know, in, in Arizona, we have a slogan, more solar for less money. You know, we, we feel that you can build larger scale solar farms cheaper for customers than paying for rooftop solar on individual mm -hmm. homes. Uh, what we find in a lot of cases is people to put solar on their homes mm -hmm. are m sort of middle to high income people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some cases, if you don't have the right policy, that starts yeah. to increase costs for you know, everyone else on, on the electric utility system. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure you get the policy right mm -hmm. so that the people are paying their fair share of what it costs to operate the, the overall grid in, yeah. in a particular jurisdiction. So uh, I think you got, and, and it's evolving, and I think it's changing a little bit and getting better, mm -hmm. but you got to be very careful that, that you don't uh, cause something that creates an unintended consequence and impacts other customers yeah. that probably can't afford to put uh, solar on the, on the roofs. Yeah. Now, you know, when we talk about renewable energy, obviously, um, the conversation about climate change isn't. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask from your perspective, how do you uh, make plans for potential investments, whether it be hydro or solar, given the changes that we are seeing with climate change? Yeah. And then you were talking about the drought we experienced a few years ago. We spoke a lot about it with the agricultural sector, but we didn't talk about how it impacted hydro. And it's the same with, with uh, solar energy as well. So let's talk about your experience in being able to mitigate or adapt to climate change. Right. Well, maybe I'll take a stab at that one first, Lee and I. Yeah. You know, from my perspective, is, you know, clearly you have to acknowledge that uh, climate change is occurring. It's probably always been occurring. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my perspective, what companies like Fortis have to do is continually make improvements in their in their business in their mm -hmm. assets and we have a drive to I would say it's cleaner energy and not 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 the term clean energy because uh, cleaner energy includes natural gas which yeah. uh, which Lynn has mentioned and uh, so Fortis our goal is to be better every year in terms of the energy that we deliver to our customers is it cleaner are we making progress and I can tell you we are mm -hmm. we're making great progress in places like Arizona where uh, where we're actually transitioning away from coal, for example, because mm -hmm. we do have coal in our generation fleet in that state, and uh, so we're making progress there. 
We also have a big transmission company now in the, in the Midwestern United States that's hooking up tremendous amount of wind power. So, so we're a real participant in that sort of uh, process of bringing that, uh, that assets on, those assets onto the grid. And uh, so we're doing a lot in these areas. And again, back to Belize, Belize is already in a pretty strong position in terms of contributing to reducing carbon by the fact that you know, the country moved ahead and with its hydroelectric developments. And, and I'm hopeful now with, uh, with solar, we can actually do more there as well. And I think Belize will be able to stand up and say, we're doing our part. In, in the world, frankly, as to uh, as to contributing to to reducing the impact of, of uh, mm -hmm. our operations on on the climate. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think for Bicol, the climate change, of course, it, it affects the rainfall mm -hmm. and you know how much water we have to to generate. So, like in a drought, we didn't have to, you know our delivery of, of power was less. Yeah, and then BL would have had to rely more on importing power from Mexico, yeah. and and they also were suffering from droughts. Mm -hmm. So, because they have some big hydro plants too, that, that yeah. you know, so their their, their cost would go up. So um, it does affect the customer in terms of the cost of energy because when you have a drought and you have less hydro power, then you have to use power from more expensive sources. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it affects us there. Um, and BL in that case would have had to use more its gas turbine, passing diesel through the gas turbine again. That's more expensive. But in terms of infrastructure etc for us it doesn't affect us that that much because we're we're up in the hills we're, we're not affected by sea level rise for sure um, and again coming back to solar that's a good fit for us too because you know in the case of a drought yeah well hopefully we get no more, more sun yeah. right <laughs> so um, yeah as, as Barry said you know you just have to keep improving you, you, you have to stay focused keep improving um, and, and we are trying to focus on green energy and okay. renewables yeah. and see where it takes us. Yeah. But you always got to be wary of doing big things, yeah. you know, and the impact on customers' rates, right? Yeah. And uh, you always, you know, we you know, really got to be wary of, of things that massively change customer rates. And some things we can't control if it's a commodity, oil prices, those kind of things. But, mm -hmm. but in terms of your investment in your assets and, and the impact on, on your customers, you've got to be very thoughtful about uh, how much your customers can afford to pay. Yeah. You know, we're not a regulated business anymore, but we sell in you know, under our, our agreements now to BEL. But, uh, but you know, we're very concerned, obviously, over the long term, the impact of our investments on, on customer rates. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you've got to be thoughtful and, and, and try to at least limit your increases to inflationary um, you know, increases uh, at, you know, at a maximum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it's definitely good news for Belize and then again for the world to hear about uh, green energy yeah. because that's actually a promotion that's going on right now. Right. We did mention 40% uh, of uh, what we are receiving is actually uh, green energy. Right. It's What's more than that really. It's part of potential of hydro, but then you have the bagasse, which is another like 15. Yeah. And with um, Santander, Santander now, mm -hmm. it probably we might be close to sixty percent. And, and if for Beacon, what's the long term tip, the long term plan, uh, and how far are we? Uh, how far away are we from uh, going uh, that route solely? Well, I would say you know clearly we're interested in in doing as much solar as we can. I, you know whether we can be the party that does it all. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm an aggressive business person, so I, I, I'd like to, I'd like to say yes, we could, but but you know clearly that will be up to the government and the regulator as to uh, how how that unfolds. Um, but clearly, there's some more room to uh, to add solar. Mm -hmm. I don't think, as Lane mentioned earlier, you could get to 100 percent. There always will be a need for backup generation and the fact that you're connected to Mexico is so important you know that transmission system and mm -hmm. and you got to be wary of how adding more uh, in-country resources affects the relationship with Mexico mm -hmm. and and the, the contract that the, that BEL has with Mexico these are all factors we'll have to go into the considerations and mm -hmm. uh, you know but I think there's some room to uh, to add uh, some more solar and and walk before you run you know ha add some uh, some uh, five or ten megawatts, and then and then sort of see how that uh, fits into the system, and then decide is there another incremental step beyond that uh, to uh, to move forward. So, uh, but you got to get started. You, know, yeah. you sort of got to got to get started, and uh, so that's what we've been encouraging in our conversations with yeah. government, and uh, we'll continue to do that. So, what you're saying is that at this point, you're simply expressing your interest. Correct. And you have an investment plan in place. Well, we're actually in the process of developing that right now. We know 
generally the parameters because of all of our experience in mm -hmm. in um, in the U.S. primarily on on solar, and uh, so we know generally the, the parameters of what we can do. And mm -hmm. Lynn has had some some of our folks down from Arizona already looking at uh, looking mm -hmm. at this, and uh, you know uh, we may proceed, for example, and make a proposal, but mm -hmm. you know we really want to take some guidance from from the government from. BEL from P, from the uh, regulator as well. So yeah. uh, you know, we're always going to be very respectful yeah. of of the of that, and uh, you know it only works if if we uh, all agree how to move forward, and that's uh, that's what we're seeking right now. So yeah, and based on these assessments you've done so far, mm -hmm. is there an indicator as to how much energy you would like to provide? Yeah, as as Barry said, we could do like maybe five or ten megawatts in the first instance, and, okay. and we were thinking of doing it in the same area as Chalia, okay. because then you don't have to build a transmission line, you don't have to build mm -hmm. substations. It's just putting the panels, connect them up, and go. Right. So I think it's going to be very cost effective. Um, yeah, ten megawatts of, of solar, it'll add maybe another four or five percent of the energy supply okay. of the country and that's going to be more renewables in the energy supply. Okay. Plus I think Belize then can stand up and say you're number one on hydro, <laughs> you're moving into solar, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it sort of fits with the overall messaging of, of, the, of the country from a tourism perspective, mm -hmm. you know, this sort of uh, eco-tourism, green uh, focus country mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's really that messaging, you know, continues to be very powerful throughout uh, North America in terms of how it draws mm -hmm. people into the country. And we all know that Costa Rica has done a great job at, uh, at that stuff. And recently, I think one of our conversations yesterday yeah. was some, some expressing some frustration that Belize hasn't been able to surpass uh, Costa Rica, given that, frankly, it has probably better better sort of assets, I'll call it. Yeah. Uh, and so I think mm -hmm. that this all fits with the narrative of, uh, of that. And uh, hopefully we can help uh, help that process. Yeah. So let's take it back uh, one step at a time uh, to your groundbreaking. And Lynn, yes. I didn't miss the fact that you were talking about uh, a green infrastructure. Please explain to us what that means. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now there's this, there's um, a, a standard now for, for, for buildings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that you can certify a building as a green building. Yeah. So you have things like natural lighting, mm -hmm. you have um, like the roofs and stuff where the light can come in so you use less electricity oh, to yeah. put on the... The, the lights and all that, the insulation of the building to reduce the, the heat exchange so you use less air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then again, of course, plants, using plants in, in particular areas to provide shading and also to provide, to, to keep the air clean and all yeah. that sort of stuff. So we are getting international um, environment, what's the IE, IEE. Uh -huh. IE, yeah, IE. International Environment. Yeah. yeah, they are the architects of the building and they okay. are LEED certified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are, um, they've told us that this is probably going to be one of the first buildings that's going to be certified, LEED certified. Wow. So nice. that's, that's where we're heading yeah. and that fits in with, uh, you know, what we're trying to project, yeah. what we're trying to do at Beaker. Yeah. Now, this is obviously a very important step for you, especially looking at the potential expansions that you want to do in the future. Um, what, what's what's the uh, the projected timeline at this point? So this should be finished within a year. Okay. okay. So I think next year this time we're hoping that we'll be moving in, mm -hmm. and uh, if if things go well, um, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe within a year after that we have our first solar plant, and maybe before. Yeah. Lynn wants to keep. Yeah. Keep having me come back. So, uh, <laughs> every year, I, I expect him to have something that he wants to me to participate. Exactly. In. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him a, re a reason to come back, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, some more, some more good news in terms of uh, yeah. state-of-the-art building here, and yeah. uh, I think mile sixty-seven. What part of mile sixty-seven? So that's going to be about three miles. Um, from St. Ignatia on the way mm -hmm. to Benke. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So, you know, St. Ignatia is Beacon's home. St. Mm -hmm. Ignatia, Benke, Sakot. Um, we do a lot of co community work in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is going to also, you know, that, that, that strip, I don't know if you've, if you've been there, but it's a really beautiful mm -hmm. stretch of road there. Mm -hmm. And um, we're looking forward to enhancing the, the, that, that drive. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a lovely spot. And the groundbreaking is? It's today. today. Wow. At 10.30. When you guys let us go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you check your watch yet, so we'll see. <laughs> now, let me, let, me, let me move just a little bit into... Uh, How did you remind one, me? <laughs> one of the areas... He's got me out of tight schedule. <laughs> you know, when, when, the, when the dams are being built, obviously, you have people who have concerns about yeah. environmental damage. 
and it still continues to be a part of the message you hear from some areas. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking at future investments in terms of solar energy, what's the type of environmental impact that we're looking at? Uh, it's very, very minimal. I, I, to be honest, putting up, putting solar panels at Chalia in the Chalia area, there's absolutely no environment. Maybe some clearing. You have to clear trees, wouldn't you? No, no. Well, the area we're putting it doesn't have any trees. Oh, okay. yeah. It's, it's on a hilltop that that's kind of bald. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, 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 yeah. It's um, the son of the bald beacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't anticipate the, the kind of issues. But even Chalier itself, um, the environmental issues that had been anticipated have not been nearly as bad as as people had said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest issue has always been water quality. You know, they spoke about the birds and all that. But we do finance FCD. We are a big um, sponsor of FCD and they do an annual wildlife survey. And they have actually found that the, the birds have not suffered. But the, the big problem for the macaw parrots has been poaching yeah. and the incursions from across the border and people, in, you know. So that's where their effort has been to try to maintain the bird population, but the population, if I remember rightly, the last report I saw has actually been growing. Okay. So that's been good. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same with all the wildlife in the area. They have not been negatively affected. The, the biggest issue has been water quality, um, the mercury, and, and that comes from the rotting vegetation in the, in, in the reservoir. Yeah. So as in, in the first instance, the mercury levels went up, mm -hmm. and now it has been it's, it's done back to what it was before the dam was, was built. Um, but that was still higher than accepted standards, right? Mm -hmm. Last year, what we did when we did the mercury study, we decided to check some of the other rivers in Belize. Mm -hmm. And we found that, for example, the river up north, the, um, that passes the sugar factory, what's the, this, that's the new river, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we found that in some of the other rivers, the mercury levels are actually as elevated as in the... Um, mm -hmm in the river there so it showed that we are back to normal levels for Belize yeah. and it makes sense because we have a lot of vegetation in our rivers mm -hmm. so, and it's a rotten vegetation that releases the mercury, mercury right so we have passed that on to the Ministry of Health so that they could know what to do with mm -hmm. respect to that and then there's the issue of turbidity you know um, one of the things that does happen is that when we have big floods mm -hmm. before the dams there would be a big flood that passes down and then maybe in a week or two it clears up the dam catches the flood water and so it takes a little longer for the flood water to get released. Mm -hmm. So instead of clearing up, instead of the river clearing up in a week or two, it might take three or four weeks to mm -hmm. before it clears up after a flood. Um, so, but that's yeah. you know that that's about the the, the extent so, of the difference. I'm just uh, a couple of comments from my perspective because I was I wasn't CEO at the time this yeah. was all happening in Belize with our construction of uh, Chileo and Vaca. I was CFO of Ford as Chief Financial Officer. But I, I have to say, I admire the courage of the Belizean government, Belizean people to, to go ahead with the hydroelectric development. And I admire Fortis, frankly, for sticking with it, because uh, yeah. we did get a lot of negative uh, input about it. And, but I, I sort of say, look at it now. Yeah. Look at what it does for the country to have these stable power prices, 40% renewable power coming mm -hmm. from these assets. I can't even imagine the country without those assets at yeah. this point in time and uh, so I think it was all worth it you know and uh, but it was difficult it was difficult to get you know and most of it was unfounded criticism frankly and and I know the government officials at the time very much stood up and said you're doing the right thing and, mm -hmm. and they were doing the right thing so uh, so I'm we're proud to have uh, been part of that and now see the success of our company and and the contributions that the plants are making to uh, to the country mm -hmm. and what I'm hearing is that you try to balance it out with investment in environmental groups as well oh yeah we, 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 we do a lot of that yeah okay. definitely yeah uh, I, you know last year um, we had hurricane Earl and I don't know if you remember how high the water was under the Hawksworth bridge mm -hmm. after the hurricane passed mm -hmm. So when I saw it in the news, I was like, wow. So I first, I, first thing I did, I called up at Beacon and say, what's happening at Chalia? Chalia wasn't even full yet. Really? Yeah. So what was happening was that the Mopan was flooding and we are on, which is below Chalia, you know, the we are on falls. Mm -hmm. That was flooding. All of that water was coming from we are on. Mm -hmm. The water that Chalia captured would have been double that. 
<laughs> so if it wasn't for Chalia, that floor would have probably been like maybe eight or nine feet higher wow. than it was. Yeah. We don't want to imagine that. I know, <laughs> I know. It would have been a disastrous flood yeah. if we, if if Chalia hadn't Chalia been stopping hadn't been that. Yeah. It's it it was stopping the water from up upstream, mm -hmm. yeah. but then we are on and Macau and the Mopan was flooding and and that's what caused such. I was looking at it and said, oh, wow, yeah. it's a good thing we had that down there. Yeah. 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 Now, Barry, obviously, uh, having the opportunity to be in country, you're here for the groundbreaking and obviously to liaise uh, with the relevant authorities for your future investments. Um, you know, Belize is obviously in a position where we do need uh, to attract investors mm -hmm. for worthwhile businesses. Yeah. Um, what do you say about uh, the potential um, of investing in Belize, you have the experience and you're still looking into future investments and, and why it's a wise decision or a lucrative decision for Fortis? Well, you know, it's, we went through a really rough mm -hmm. period, clearly, and in my view, that is settled at this point in time and, yeah. uh, you know, we have our investment now in BEL and uh, uh, one third and that's, you know, that seems to be performing okay and we have our B-call business. So, so, you know, the fact is we're here, and uh, if you're here, you, you want to grow. You know, yeah. businesses that don't grow, you know, to me, they don't really, they're not successful businesses. Yeah. So I'm always mm -hmm. encouraging all my teams, and we have, we have sort of 10 utility businesses across our group now, all with their own teams, mm -hmm. and uh, we're encouraging all of them to focus on, on growth. So, so that's why, you know, one of the reasons I'm here with Lynn, and we're exploring, we're, you know, what other ways can we grow in the country? Mm -hmm. You know. People would say, maybe people would say it's unwise for Fortis to now be coming back to Belize given our experiences, but um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling that uh, we're through it, frankly. And, if uh, I could just interject there, it, is the settlement deal obviously a part of what allowed you to be able to now look into future investments? I think yes. Without that, clearly, you know, we were in a lot of litigation. Mm -hmm. and without that, you know, it would be very difficult to uh, be thinking about investment. You know, mm -hmm. so and that was a it was took two parties to settle, the mm -hmm. government and ourselves. So we we did uh, we did make a settlement, and that is done and behind us. And mm -hmm. and the agreement itself is in operation. You know, the the various conditions, and each side have, has been living up to uh, its obligations mm -hmm. on on that agreement. So. So it's been a couple of years. You know, we've been pretty quiet for a couple of years mm -hmm. now since the settlement. Um, you know, Lynn obviously is is my sort of uh, on the ground person, and I've always had a lot of conversations with him about, you know, should we start thinking about investment, investment again? Yeah. And uh, and you know, I've made a decision. Yeah, I think we should. And uh, you know, there's. I'm from Newfoundland, like it's a small island in Canada, right? So I'm used to issues around economic development mm -hmm. and and uh, you know rural areas versus urban areas and the issues around that. Uh, I f there's a lot of similarity in a way between Belize and uh, and Newfoundland, and uh, you know I have a lot of sympathy for uh, for the issues that are going on. And mm -hmm. uh, you know if we can play a part, obviously we're doing it from a business perspective. Yeah. You know we, it's got to be a successful venture from that perspective and. Uh, so solar seems to be the right place for mm -hmm. us right mm -hmm. now. It matches up against the goals of the overall company of Fortis. It matches up against the goals of the country. And it's the, it's, it's the business that we're in in Belize, so renewable energy. And uh, so for me, it, you know, it's a good fit. And maybe it's a good way for Fortis and Belize to, to move forward together mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully reestablish a very strong relationship uh, that, that we've had in the past, frankly. Yeah. So. You know, uh, you, you, you did mention that uh, with all that took place uh, before, and it's a very brazen move to eventually try to make that investment back in Belize, you might have investors who are actually thinking about it, and I'm sure you've spoken to one of them. What captivates Fortis the most about this country to say, you know what, the let's people. invest? The people. Uh, <laughs> there's so much similarity between Belize and our home province in Newfoundland and Labrador and uh, uh, you know I don't know if you know but you know Belize is I think doing a reverse takeover of Newfoundland we have so <laughs> many students who are coming from Belize oh, yeah. attending our university yeah. in St. John's and you know I know Lynn's uh, family of all just about except yeah. his daughter have all graduated from Memorial University yeah. um, and so this continues to be very strong ties between the two places I hope yeah. that that can continue uh, you know, overall, Fortis has become a very large company, so 
Belize is a very small part of that pie at this point in time. It's probably less than 1% of our entire assets. And, uh, but I'm here. I'm here because I like the country. I like this man. He's, a, he's the best quality person that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that, you know. You're going to make me blush. I'm going to act like if, if, I was to pick, if I was to pick one person who I would want to represent us in Belize, it's we have guy. him right here. Mm -hmm. My only fear is that eventually we'll t retire. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know, when you have that kind of uh, asset, yeah. you, you just want to, you want to let it run. You, yeah. know, you want, okay, let's, let's, what can we do? And uh, so let's hope, you know, like, we don't get back to any of that stuff, you yeah. know, that we are, we deal you. respectfully with each other, and uh, I'm I'm liking what I see so far, you know. Yeah. And but again, go back. You got to walk before you run. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect us to put half a billion dollars into Belize <laughs> right now. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. we gotta, we, you know, let's let's just walk before we run. So what would be the uh, size of investment for the solar energy plant? It could easily be up to fifty million dollars. Okay. You know, that kind of range. Uh, but I would suspect it's probably if it's a five megawatt plant. It's 15 to 20 million dollars, mm -hmm. you know, like U.S. basically, yeah. right? So, um, so we'll double, obviously, Belizean. So, yeah. So Lynn has already outlined his uh, optimistic timeline. Yeah. For yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Building in a year, solar plant a year later. So. There you go. <laughs> but as, as you mentioned several times, you're in the discussion phase, and uh, what has been the feedback so far? Positive. Yeah. Very positive. You know, clearly, from a government's perspective, it's okay. How do we? work through the regulatory approval process mm -hmm. how do we engage with belize electricity uh, these are all critical components of moving forward and again th that we had to work through those issues at this point what we're saying is we're putting our hand up and saying we have the expertise mm -hmm. we have the capital we think we can do a project that is uh does not increase customer rates mm -hmm. you know so uh, so it would be at least like um uh, Break even from a customer rate persp yeah. pers perspective, and it would but would increase the amount of renewable power on the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so with those sort of broad strokes, can we can we find a way to move forward? And uh, we're hopeful we can. All right. All right. So. And in the meantime, you break ground for your new home That's uh, in San Ignacio today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know we're going to have a bit of coverage of that in our newscast tonight. So oh, thank you for stopping you. in and letting us, uh, keeping us updated as to what you hope to do, what you are doing. And of course, you're always welcome back when uh, you. Lynn drags you to Belize. <laughs> 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 thank you so much. All right. Okay, we're sure. going to go yeah. ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the upcoming Grand Caribe Sea Classic, a fishing tournament taking place this weekend. So stay tuned.